Irish guy. <laughs> I'm from Sweden, we don't talk that much. <laughs> but I started off in Sweden and I uh, ended up running a clinic for a lady that had healed herself of rheumatoid arthritis. And I thought it was fantastic that there actually was such a thing, that if you had rheumatoid arthritis and you were totally crippled and you lived on medication, that you could totally return that to normal without medication and get your mobility back. And so I totally gave in to her work and, uh, you know, worked with her night and day. And uh, then I met Anne Vigmore, 76, when she came to lecture. And I always thought one day I have to go and study with her to know the living food program. Because we were vegan. And when you're from Europe, vegan is everything. What about living food, you know? I've never heard the word before. But she's talking about sprouting and germinating seed and getting 10 times more food than what you started with. In 78, I saw her again, and Brian actually came with her at that time, and uh, he told me one time, one day you marry somebody like me. <laughs> and I probably did it one ear out the other ear, but I wasn't supposed to forget it. In 83, I came over to really study with that paper, and uh, then I fell in love with Brian. <laughs> it was the best thing that happened. And it's been growing this whole movement. It's been so wonderful to live it and to see it grow at the same time. Our children have been brought up this way. You see one of them here, the 10-year-old Blake. We have three others that are in college, out of college, that have, you know, succeeded and, and stayed very, very healthy in their life. And, you know, in our work, I sit and look at blood tests. My work is, I do consultation, I look at clinical blood tests, I look at dry blood. Dry blood and live blood on the microscope will magnify it 10,000 times. It's unbelievable. You actually get to see the changes. We have a three-week program. So in three weeks, you know, it takes 21 days to change a habit. If anything, you try to change any habits, you need to give it 21 days. So we have a 21-day program, and the changes that happen is phenomenal. So we see... For example, a lot of people have high protein or low protein, and they, they think they're in a good protein state because they eat a lot of meat, they eat a lot of dairy. I, I was brought up my first 15 years was heavy duty dairy and meat, because in Sweden that's what you live on. At 15 I became vegetarian. But, you know, when you eat normal, normal diet and you have the meat and the dairy, you think that you are fine in calcium, you think you're fine in the minerals and, and protein, and then the, you get to see it before and after at the institute, and you realize that was not true at all. You either had too little or too much, but, but for sure you did not digest the protein you ate. And you're going to learn tonight that dairy products, for example, are the most carcinogenic of all foods. So here goes the dairy. We don't need any dairy. Our children have never touched dairy except mother's milk. But mother's milk is the only dairy a child ever should have. Never should a child have cow's milk. If it, in any time that there is mother who cannot nurse, we would suggest goat's milk. But that would be an emergency like that. So you learn that most of us eat far too much sugar. And now, it, when you study cancer, you realize that obesity, diabetes, you know, cardiovascular problem, it comes very much from the same source. We're overeating. We're overeating protein, fat, and sugar. But sugar is really, really harmful here because your pancreas have to make enough insulin to keep up with our daily sugar intake. Well, if it's heavy sugar intake, and it's not just the white sugar you can see, it's the honey, the maple syrup, the fruits, the carrot juices, the pasta, the bread, you know, the pizza, the alcohol, you know. I mean, it comes in so many places, and dairy for sure, heavy duty sugar. So we are all sugar addicts. We might not think of it because we don't even put white sugar on our food or on our <laughs> breads and everything. But we are sugar addicts. So we are more or less in a sugar problem because most people, when I say the milk guy, comes in with one glucose number and usually drops that glucose number while they're there showing that they have too much insulin production. Because the more sugar you eat, the more insulin production you have. And your poor pancreas cannot be on overdrive forever and ever. So as years goes by, 
one day you will not be able to make all that insulin. And you know, insulin is what makes your cell be absorbing, able to absorb the sugar. Because sugar is the energy in your body, it's the energy. So you need the insulin to absorb the glucose. <coughs> and one day you can't do that. And now you have all this glucose running around in your body. And now, of course, diabetes happens. Diabetes number two. <coughs> and once that is happening, now cancer risk increases enormously, especially breast and colon and prostate cancer. That has been researched left and right. We sit and look at it in a totally different way, where we can see that you don't have to go that way, where you can actually treat that diabetes, get rid of it, live a symptom-free life, which, you know, for us, there is no cure for anything. Because if I start eating all the bad foods again, did I ever cure it again, you know? It's, it's a lifestyle change, which is a commitment with responsibility and everything that comes with it, you know? You, you really become your own doctor. There's nobody else that would be there to be your own doctor, really. So, it's, uh, it, we see it, and the insulin, really works as the fuel for the gas tank of cancer. <clears throat> so does heavy uh, um, anti-inflammatory uh, inflammatory hormones, sex hormones, like when we eat foods that are loaded with um, pesticides and fertilizers that gives us a lot of estrogens. Even a lot of tofu in this lifestyle, not even eat too much tofu, gives us too much estrogen. All that fuels the tank of uh, of a cancer cell, but especially, especially the sugar, especially with that, it's a problem because it creates a lot of insulin, and that is number one of the fuel for the gas tank of a cancer cell. So just imagine how we could have turned this around and prevented a lot of problems by staying out of sugar. You will hear from Brian also. You know we have. Uh, Fruit, fruit we are very sparingly using. Some people we tell don't eat any fruit for a few years because it's not a good thing right now. Most fruits are picked up right. <clears throat> that means they're acid forming. Most problems have an acid alkaline imbalance. You know, most just have to be totally confident and open to you know what you're doing and not stop and hold in the middle and say, you know, this looks really strange. The, the Institute is really there to be as a platform, as a mothership with, for education. Because that's, this is what we've been doing, Ron and I. For 35, or 38 years, this is what we've been doing. And so, you know, we have that platform. We have that confidence in what we're doing. And, um, you know, that's, uh, that I think is, our strength, that this is not theory, this is science, this is what we're dealing with. And it works, and uh, we love it, and uh, I welcome Ryan. Thank you.